Aloha, aloha. All right, per last part of our first quest here, right? Our first quest is going to be Euler's method, integration by parts, and now partial fractions and logistic growth. They kind of go hand in hand, okay? And I want to bring us up one topic that we did in AB, okay? And if you remember, it was exponential growth. This is logistic growth. But if we go back to exponential growth, there was a differential equation that was associated to it. And it was this. Now, I am going to be just crazy impressive. If you guys could remember, if I solve that, what do I get? See if you can write it down right now. Did you get it right? You got it right if you wrote this. That's y is equal to ce to the kt. And remember, if you knew that relationship between the differential equation and the actual equation, it really saved us a lot of time and effort. So the same thing holds true for logistic growth. All right, so we're going to introduce our logistic growth here with what a logistic growth graph looks like. And the graph looks like the following. It, it increases over the entire time period, but at some points it increases at an increasing rate, and at some points it increases at a decreasing rate, right? And some of, if we're in BC, we probably have an idea that it changes at the point of inflection, right, class? And that is when it's going to change its concavity, okay? And that's where it changes it, it, right here. It's increasing at an increasing rate, and then smack dab right there, right, where it changes from concave up to concave down, it increases at a decreasing rate, okay? So that's no, important point number one of logistic growth. Important point number knee, knee bond two of logistic growth is have that dude memorized. Just like for exponential growth earlier, pardon for the voice, basketball season, okay? Uh, just like earlier, you wanted to have that memorized for exponential growth, you wanna have this memorized and go, oh snap, sweet, that's logistic growth, Mr. T, right? When you see that guy, that's immediately what you wanna think of, and it makes some very difficult problems, a base a cake, all right. Now, we need to know partial fractions and able to understand the relationship between this guy and the actual y equals formula for logistic growth. Once again, just like what we did for exponential. All right, so in order for us to have a good idea of what's going on, we're going old school, all right? So what I want you to do is take this, find a common denominator, simplify that bad boy, right? And if I did that, it'd be five times x minus three minus two times two x minus one all over 2x minus 1, x minus 3. Okay, now I did all this stuff earlier, so I'm going to have a save time. If I multiply everything out, I get x minus 3, opa, 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Okay, boom. Man, BC is easy. Woo, right? That, look, that makes it look like BC is a piece of cake, which if you can factor, believe it or not, this partial fraction stuff, is not too bad. All right, example two. Okay, so how do we relate what we just did with example two? Well, when I look at example two, oh snap. I gotta find that dude's antiderivative. I mean, go ahead, try u sub, try integration by parts, right? None of that stuff works. So snap, what does this look like? Well, it looks like the bottom is a quadratic, and the bottom looks like it's a quadratic that I could separate into two linear factors, right? What does that guy factor down to? I got it right here. We just did it. 2x minus 1, x plus 3 dx, right, class? Now, if you can split it, split it up into two linear factors, you're able to get the answer. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit, right? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go back to that page I did earlier. And if you look at that page we did earlier, what page am I talking about? I'm just going to bring this, right? I'm just going to bring this guy down, okay? Because I learned by going forwards, I'm just going to go backwards. And then you're going to see we have the coolest technique ever for going backwards. So I have the integral of negative 2 over, what was it? It was x minus 3 dx. I'm going to split it up into two separate integrals. And the integral of 5 over 2x minus 1 dx, okay? And then check that out. I could definitely find that dude's antiderivative, right? It's got a negative 2 that I'm going to pull out, and I know I'm doing this kind of quick, but we are in base 8, okay? So I'm going to pull out that negative 2, which ends up being 1 over x minus 3. So that's why I could do u sub, 
but u would be x minus 3 and 1 over u, right? 1 over u. 1 over u is just a natural log. So this is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3. And there's nothing I have to fix because u would be x minus 3. And remember, the derivative of x minus 3 is 1. So I don't really need u sub for that bad boy, okay? But plus 5. Okay, I got a 5 on this one. Oh, this time my u would be 2x minus 1 and the derivative of 2x minus 1 is 2. So I could do u sub for that or I could fix it. Since it's going to bring a 2, I've got to erase that, dude. So I'm going to add a 1 half. And then that would be the natural log of 2x minus 1. And then obviously, plus C, right? And there we go. We got an answer right now. Now just know the AP can be tricky with some things like this. They might want to reorganize this. How could they reorganize this? Well, those guys could go up as exponents. You know, we could go maybe like a, a five halves. Let's take this up here. Just so you guys are aware, the AP loves testing. You know, do you know your pre-calc stuff? Minus two, right? Class X minus three plus C. And then they're like, oh, a minus sign means that I can combine those guys, right? Uh, but I have to be careful. That two would be an exponent. So let's go ahead and put those guys up there as exponents. So it'd be two X minus one to the five halves minus the natural log of x minus three squared, which then I could technically get rid of that absolute value, right? And then I could combine those guys. What would that be? That'd be the natural log. Uh, here we go, the absolute value. On the top, I would have a, a 2x minus one to the five halves. On the bottom, I would have an x minus three squared, right? That's just using rules of logs. Just remember that they're gonna do stuff like that, okay? All right, so. On the AP exam, you'll be expected to decompose rational expressions involving non, so important, non-repeating linear factors in the denominator. For cases as this, there is a very slick method you can use that was developed by Oliver, not so much on the heavy side, called the heavy side cover-up method. All right, so this dude, Look pretty chill. Dudes, I, look, I hope when they take my black and white photo, I look that chill. Tanaka cover up method. Um, all right, here we go. All right, so I can only use that. Well, let's go back old school, right? I mean, I have to integrate that. I should think U sub. I should think integration by parts. No, 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 no. Okay, but what is the red flag? What's the light bulb that goes off? It should be, hey, if I look at the bottom there, I can factor that. And I can factor it into some non-repeating linear factors in the denominator, okay? So we have that. On the bottom, I get a little x plus 2, x minus 1, dx. Now, I cheated earlier, remember? Not allowed to cheat, so we are going to use the heavy side cover up, cover up, cover up method, okay? So we're going to do right here now. So, so how the heck does the cover up method first? Well, first you got to factor, all right? And here it is. Check out this. All right, you ask yourself, x plus 2. What makes x plus 2 zero? It's a negative 2. So guess what I do? I cover up. Oh, I can't really cover it up. Can I cover it up here? I can't really cover it up. Ooh, so I'm going to do, ooh, ooh, ooh. So I'm going to do this. Let's cover up that. Okay. And now you put a negative 2 everywhere else. And what do you get? Well, if I put a negative 2, do those side work here. If I put a negative 2 everywhere else, I'm going to get a negative 2 plus 5 over a negative 2 minus 1, which gives me a, what's that give me? That gives me a 3 over a negative 3, which is a negative 1. So that means, believe it or not, I could rewrite this. Seems crazy, but I could rewrite this as the integral of negative 1, because that was my answer, negative 1, over... What did I cover up? X plus 2 dx. That's my first factor. Seems crazy, but this dude was so smart. He figured that out. Okay, I wish I did. I'd be driving in my Tesla. No, my Jaguar. All right. Um, okay, but I'm not done yet because I got to cover up the other side. So I'm not going to rewrite it. Darn it. You know what? Oh, I can't get fancy. This thing doesn't erase. It erases the whole thing. So we want to bring this X plus 2 back. Now I want to cover, cover up the x minus 1. Well, what makes that 0? A 1 makes that 0. So let's come back here and do side work. You know, we'll call it side work niban. Ooh, that's side work ichiban. Okay, so side work niban would be cover up this guy, cover up that guy, and I'm going to put a 1 there and a 1 there, which gives me a 
1 plus a 5 over a 1 plus a 2, which gives me a 6 over a tree, which is nibut, okay, which is 2. So then I come over here in my problem, and I got to have a plus the integral of 2 over, what did I cover up? x minus 1, so an x minus 1 goes there, dx. And you know what's crazy? If you, if you were actually to go backwards of adding your fractions together, or if you take these two factors right here, and add your fractions together, you get that. Seems crazy, but it is 100% true. And that's, then guess what? I'm donezo, right? I'm donezo because that's a negative one. I can pull the negative one out, okay? If I pull the negative one out, let's get rid of those bad boys, okay? Uh, cancel. Oh, snap. Let's go. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back, right? So I got to go booyah. I got to go booyah. Thank you so much. Take the negative one out, right? Negative one. Then it's just one over. And, and it's a natural log. And I don't even have to think about u sub because if I made u equal to x plus 2, right, with derivative of x plus 2 is just 1, so I don't really need it. I'm going to plug this 2 out, and then it's, a, it's 1 over u, so it would be that bad boy, right, class, plus c, right? And if we're in bc, we should be able to handle that. Remember, I just talked about earlier. I'm not going to do it right now. But you could really simplify that bad boy using your properties of logs. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too bad, class. Let's keep rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, snap. So fun. So fun. Because if you look at this one, ooh, I could do linear factors on the bottom, but guess what? That's not going to get me anywhere. You know why? Because your first thought should be when you have a problem like this, polynomial upstairs and downstairs, if the degree, the degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, what do I got to do? Long divide. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole long division with you. But if I set it up here, make sure you practice it, class. Okay, make sure you practice it. If you do all of that, you get an answer of x. What do I got here? x cubed. Not x cubed. There's no way it's x cubed. Snappy dee dappy. That's the final answer. It's 3x squared. You know how I knew that was wrong because that's my first guy, right? Um, plus 3. And this one had a remainder, and the remainder was plus 4. And remember, whenever you have a remainder, we write it over what we are dividing by. Okay, so I've got to do that. All right, so let's go. Let's get a little crazy. Squared plus 3 plus 4 over x squared minus 1 dx. So another method, another uh, requirement and able to use our heavy side cover up method is I need those non-repeating linear factors on the bottom, which I'm going to get when I, when I do that difference of squares. But I have to have something in the numerator, right class? Something in the numerator that is less than, less than, it's got to be less than the degree of the bottom, right? If not, you've got to do some long division to get you going. All right, so we all know that the antiderivative of that is x to the third. And, I'm, and, I, and I know I'm skipping maybe a couple things that I should do, right? And this would be 3x. But then I still have to do this bad boy right here, which would be 4, 1 over x minus 1, x plus 1, right, dx. And the only way to do that bad boy there, it is not inverse tangent, right? Inverse tangent would be 1 over x squared plus 1. So that was a good thought if you had it. Um, but I've got to do the cover-up method. All right, so let's do the cover-up method, right? There's some side work. I'm going to do my cover-up in blue. So I'm going to put right here, okay, Ichiban. First one we're doing. Let's cover up x minus 1. If I cover up x minus 1, so I'm going to cover this up right here. What makes that a 0 is a 1. So that means I'm going to put a 1 in there, and I'm going to get 1 half. I'm going to get 1 half, right, class? So let's go ahead and rewrite this. Uh, I want my red marker back so nobody gets confused. So we have x cubed plus 3x plus a 4 on the outside. And then right now I'm going to have a 1 half on the upstairs. And then what do I put that over? What I covered up, which would be x minus 1 dx. Okay? So that's good to go, right? All right, let's go back now and let's do side work number Niban. Okay? So here goes side work number Niban. I don't want to say it, but my mark, I shouldn't have thought it. This marker is not failing me today. If it goes off, I'm going to go crazy. All right, here we go. What makes, if I cover up this, okay, so now I'm going to cover up this guy. So what makes that guy a zero? Uh, negative one. So that means I'm going to put a negative one in there, which would be one over negative one minus one, which would be negative one half this time. Okay, okay. Now I am, because I know it's going to make my work easier, I'm going to pull that negative out. Okay, and I still have one half over 
x plus 1 dx. Okay, now it should be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, job on easy. Okay, so we got that. We got that 4 on the outside. Let's go ahead and find some antiderivatives. 1 half, I'm just going to go ahead and bring out. It's a natural log, and my u would be x minus 1, and the derivative of that would just be 1, so I'm good to go. I'm going to pull out that negative 1 half. Same thing here, natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1, and then plus sight. And then how about that? X cubed. Gosh, I hope I got this right. We just did some serious work. 2, natural log of x minus 1, minus 2, right, distributing that 4 in class, natural log of x plus 1 plus c. Booyah. Obviously, you could do some things with these luggy luggy logies, right, to get yourself a final answer. Did I get it right? I am money, 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 okay? Um, all right, that's good to go. Let's keep rolling, class. Hopefully, partial fractions is okay. All right, so... I'm going to save you the, the time. We could separate these variables, right? Separate those variables. Okay, K, remember? And then guess what? That's some linear factors. That's like a, that might be a bonus question. Could you get from that to lice, lice? Lice, right? Does that spell lice? Lice minus licked. Can you do it? Can you do it? Okay. That, I might put that on a bonus. I, I think I just might. Okay. Um, that one takes way too much time. So what did I say? We started this lesson. And I said for exponential growth, we had a differential equation, and you wanted to remember, you wanted to memorize what that differential equation equaled if we separated those variables. Same thing goes here. Okay, the acronym is LICE, right? That's LICE minus LIT. Okay, yucky pick your nose. All right, sorry, sorry, I got three little boys at home. Okay, but you want to memorize that bad boy. And the other thing you want to memorize is the following. When you have your uh, logistic growth equation, the inflection point where you are increasing most rapidly, where it changes concavity or it changes, but that is where you're increasing most rapidly, is y is equal to L, what we call your carrying capacity, over 2. And guess what? If you can, you want to memorize this page, you want to memorize what things represent, you want to memorize where things are, because it makes really difficult questions. Easy peasy, job on easy, right? And I'm going to show you how it is right here, okay? Um, here we go. That is logistic growth. How should I know? Well, you should say that looks like lice, right, minus licked. You always want to pay attention to what L is, what K is, and all that good stuff. You won't be able to find K here because K is a mixture of, well, you could find it. Um, but we really want to know what L is, which is the carrying capacity. And you can answer some questions. It says, what is the predicted population of Alaska in 2020? Well, I think you guys all would know how to do that. So I took the liberties of fast forwarding a little bit. Okay. And when I fast forwarded, I plugged in here. I'm going to turn this guy off. Okay. We're going to need that for a moment. Make sure you have your calculators out because it's very helpful. But I think I'm going back here. Oh, I have my question right here in my notes, my handy trusty notes, that it says, uh, what is the predicted population of Alaska in 2020? And it says T equals zero in 1900. Okay, so that means 2020 would be 120. So all I have to do here is second trace. I just have a value. And what is the... Population at 1920. There it is. It's 781,217 people. So that's the answer to A. Fill that bad boy in. I'm not going to do it. Okay, B, right? You guys have your notes out there, right? B. B says, how fast was the population of Alaska changing in 1920? Well, how fast is a derivative, right, class? So we don't have to change this to the dy dt formula. I'm allowed to use my calculator. So I'm just a little second trace, right? I'm going to do a little derivative, which is 6. And I want to do this at 1920, which would be at 20. 
and boom, it's 1,678, right? People per year. That's how fast it's growing. And make sure, and remember, it's 1,678 people per year at the year 1920. Okay, and I'm not going to do 1940, 1999. It's the same thing. See, when was Alaska growing the fastest? And what was the population there? So when is Alaska growing the fastest? Well, oh, snap. Let's go back here. And if it's growing the fastest, I want to use these notes up here. It's going to be growing the fastest at y equals your carrying capacity, right, class? Divided by 2. It's that simple. And so it is growing the fastest at fo-fo. Oh, snap. Come on, come on. Please work, please work. See, I got cocky earlier. 4-4. Four, four. Um, what do we got? 7-7. Seven, 7-7. Seven, 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 nine, nine. And it even says, what was the population then? Well, to find out what the population is, remember, this is a skill we've all gotten much better at. Okay? We come over here. We put that population in right here at Y2, right, of when it is growing the fastest. And if I want to know when, I'm going to turn it on. They're both highlighted now. And we're going to grab that bad boy. And where they intersect, guess what, class? That is going to give me the year. So we intersect, enter, enter, enter. And guess what? There it is, 82. Does that mean 82? No, it means 1982. Because remember, when T equals 0, uh, we were at 1900. So make sure you say 1982. And now let's do D. What information does the equ equation tell us about the population of Alaska in the long run? Well, let's check it out. In the long run refers to carrying capacity. And what was our carrying capacity? D. Booyah. That's how simple that is. It's, it's going to approach. It's never going to reach it. It's like a horizontal asymptote. So make sure you say that the population will continue to grow and it will approach at a decreasing rate, right? It's still increasing, but at a decreasing rate, it's going to approach 895,598, okay? Let's keep going. How about it? Man, I do not want to jinx it, but I'm taking my chances. My marker is still chilling, straight up chilling. Um, so let's keep rolling, class. Let's keep rolling. All right, please don't go out. Booyah. Uh oh, okay, okay, okay. Booyah, booyah, right? Have that dude memorized. If you have that dude memorized, it helps out so much, especially on a question like this. All right, so let's see if we have that memorized. Boom, let's get rid of everything. All right, what is, okay, so they give me this. Uh, let's work it out. If you know what your L is, write down your L. My L is 100, right? And the formula, it was up there, right? It tells us that. Have those two things memorized, right? I don't know how many times. I have to say that. Have those things memorized. And there's my K. Right, class? Um, so it's part A. What is the carrying capacity for bears and the wildlife? Okay, snap. Done. Is it really that okay? There are actually some questions that are that okay on the AP exam. If, if you know this is logistic growth, that that is the carrying capacity, and that is your K. All right, B. What is the bear population when the population is growing the fastest? Well, it's growing the fast. What is the bear population? Well, that's just a Y value, and it's just my carrying capacity divided by 2. So the pot, what is the population? Done. Could I find out where that was? I sure could. Let's answer C. What is the rate of change of population? when it is growing the fastest. What's the rate of change? Well, that means derivative, and we want to know the rate of change when it's growing the fastest. It's growing the fastest when my population is at 50 bears. So all I have to do is plug this stuff in. We're at 0.008. I'm going to put a 50 in for P, 100 minus Viddy. Do a little calculatora, and believe it or not, we get a very nice answer of 20 bears. Okay, that is the rate of change of population when it's growing the fastest. Not bad, right, class? Let's keep going because I, I'm trying to keep these under 30. Okay, so I'm going to do this last one a little bit quick, class, because the really important one, or I'd say the probably the most difficult one could come last. Let's go ahead and do A, B, and C. Okay, and we're drawing graphs for each one of these. There's A, there's B, and there is C. 
And that is my differential equation. And it's a logistic growth. Why? Because it says it. So if you notice for this one, I don't know what my carrying capacity is. But this is written a little bit differently. So you could say, hey, maybe I could just factor. And believe it or not, you can. Okay, let's factor out, right? We always like to factor out the smallest. Ooh, and I need a P in there, right? If I factor out the smallest, I get 100 minus P. So the carrying capacity L is 100, right, class? And I could draw all these graphs. P of 0 is 5. So that's at 5. Um, the carrying capacity is going to be at 100, okay? And what does that mean? That means it is going to change, right? If I wanted to know what that would be, that would be at 50, right, class? All right, let's do B. P of 0 equals 60. Oh, snap. For reals? Well, that's 100, right? 50 was my, was my fastest growing. So, man, if I start at 60, it's going to look like that, right? It's all going to be concave down, right? Because it already passed when it was growing fastest or that inflection point. Now, how about this one? This one, I'm starting at 120. For real? And that's my carrying capacity of 100. And it's just going to decrease, believe it or not, for that one, okay? Hopefully that all made sense. Let's get to the last one here. Um, which one has an inflection point? Which solutions are strictly increasing, decreasing? I know you guys can handle that. All right, if you can't, come see me in Mandana. Okay, here we go. Here's the big bad one. This one usually causes trouble, so let's go ahead and attack this, okay? If P of 0 equals 50, solve for P as a function of T. Oh, snap. So that means you would have to separate the variables, get that C in there, find the C. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's way too long. So instead, I'm going to say, hey, that's logistic growth. Well, one, I know it is. Two, I can tell the way it looks. And guess what? That means L is 3,000. That means K is 0 .001. So let's see. If I want to solve this, I just need to know lice. Right? What's lice? Lice minus licked. Right? Okay, 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 okay. So that means that is equal to 3,000. Let's fill in. Plug and chug. Don't know C because I'm still going to have to find it. Equals negative 3,000 times, what was it? 0 0.001. And then T, right, class, which that can simplify to Y equals 3,000 over 1 plus C, E to the negative 3T. Not too bad, right, class? Not too bad right there. Um, but I still, I still have to find C. Well, I can find C, right? Plug and chug. Put a 50 in there, right? Put a 0 in there, okay, which would give me that. Oh, let's do a little flip-flop change of root. And you get 1 plus C equals 3,000 over 50, which would be 1 plus C equals 60. So C equals 59, right? So I get a log logistic growth equation of Y equals 3,000 over 1 plus 59E to the negative 3T. How sweet is that? Oh, my gosh. Try doing that without having the formula memorized. Oh my gosh, we have 90 seconds. I'm going to try my best. A is done. B, use your solution to find the size of the population when T equals 2. So B is just Y of 2, right? You could plug that into, you could plug that into your calculator, right? And just plug in a 2, right? That's all that bad boy is, right? And if you do that in your calculator, I will save us some time. I got to try to get done here in a moment. You get, you, I got, 2617. Okay, 2617, right? It's obviously increasing. Part C says, use your solution, um, which is this logistic equation right up there, uh, to find the number of days, that, oh, when, when it's the fastest. Well, when is it the fastest, right? It's 3,000 divided by 2, which would be 1,500, and I got to find the time. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my Y, right, into my equation, and booyah. And then here, I'm not going to take the time. Like I said, I'm trying to keep these under 30. It might just go briefly over. But you plug that in Y1, you plug that in Y2, and the answer is where they intersect. And guess where they intersect? At 2250. Okay, 2250. Okay, so make sure you're able to do that. I want to look real quickly here. Your homework, oh, I might be able to get done, is 1 through, I want you to do 1 through, let's do 1 through 9. Actually, 
one through eight. Okay, get those done for next class. How about it? Under 29, 51, 51, Aloha, I gotta say bye to you. Aloha, quiz coming up.